Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So, just a quick run through of what it is we are doing is this is Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution and we're going to be playing through the campaign of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series but specifically we're going to be using the deck that the characters use in the anime to as much of a degree of accuracy as possible. Okay, yes, the, the, my mic is on the stream on purpose, uh, because the whole point here is uh, for commentary, actually, um, and also just the, to show off the decks a little bit. So, yeah, so this is a, kind of a let's play of sorts and commentary on the character decks. So, since we're going to be probably, we're going to be starting with Duelist Kingdom and probably not getting to Battle City tonight. Just real quick, we're going to kind of go through uh, what these decks are, some of the choices that I made, and uh, so, and how, why I made them. So, um, each of these decks, just real quick, um, were put together by me uh, by going through every duel in the anime, and... Um, yeah, I should probably focus on the dream instead of typing stuff. Um, So, also for those of you on the stream uh, that don't know, uh, I do have a couple of friends on call with me. They are not going to be showing up on the stream, but this is mostly so that um, so that we can have some questions be asked, maybe, um, and also just so I have someone to hang out with. So. So just kind of starting with Yugi's deck, uh, I did go through, I put together a list of cards that was probably available to these characters by going through card appearances in the anime. Uh, also, start, also used the manga some as well, um, and created a chronological correlation with the OCG releases. So, for Duelist Kingdom, we're looking at cards that were released in Series 1 of the OCG, plus anything that specifically appeared in the anime or manga. And the decks are put together specifically with the cards that appeared and were played by those characters in the anime or occasionally manga. Um, and there's no card in these decks that was not, well, that would be anachronistic. Um, so Yugi had a ton of cards in his deck. Um, a lot of them were, you know, a lot of them did actually appear. Um, oh, actually, real quick, gotta make a quick edit. Uh, I forgot to do this before I started. So, um, gonna put shift in place of Relief Monster. So I had Relief Monster in here because uh, in the duel that Yugi played Shift, it was a duel where your hand kind of counted as part of the field. Um, so I had put Relief Monster, that is a decision that I have changed, but anyway, the one, the two decisions in Yugi's deck that I think require some degree of explanation are Goddess with the Third Eye, uh, Meteor Dragon, and all these fusion cards. So, 
these ex these are in here because if you notice, a lot of these are one half of something that you each have. Well, half of each of these is a card that you each have. So here's some skull. He had some skull, no red eyes. Uh, here he's got Black Luster Soldier, no Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. He has Silver Fang, but no Dark World Thorn. Uh, he has Wing Dragon Guardians of Fortune number one, no Fairy Guardian. Uh, he has Giant Soldier of Stone, no Ancient Elf. Feral Imp, no Tanaki Ashi. So, um, I was like, well, you know, let's just throw in a, throw in a Fusion Substitute Monster and Meteor Dragon, and suddenly he can summon all of these monsters with the polymerization that he already has, and it gives him some really powerful cards that he can bust out uh, with polymerization. Uh, well, some more powerful than others. Uh, <clears throat> Meteor B Dragon, Dragon Master Knight, B Skull Dragon. Uh, let's see. For Kaiba's um, some of these that might seem weird uh, would be like Aquamador, Wall of Illusion, uh, 2D Spells, Megamorph, maybe. Uh, these are all cards that he did play in some uh, capacity. The Wall of Illusion and Aquamador, as well as Lord of Dragons and Flute of Summoning Dragon, are all cards that uh, appeared in the anime in his duel against dual robot at the start of Battle City that was canonically stated to be using his Duel of Kingdom deck. Therefore, those cards would have to be included in Duel of Kingdom. Um, Sword of Dark Destruction is here because he played a couple of um, dark monster equip spells, and this is the this is one of the only ones that was relevant. Um, Stimpak, Megamorph, and Reverse Trap are all here to facilitate use of Crush Card Virus that is apparently not here. Where did Crush Card Virus go? That's weird. Okay, getting Crush Card Virus back. Um, <laughs> excuse me, everybody. Uh, I did not double check these decks before. Uh, before opening this up, I just assumed that they would still be in working order since the last time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drop Megamorph because he only played that in the manga. Uh, the two copies of Beast Bell are because in his duel against Yugi in Duelist Kingdom uh, on the roof of the, the castle, he has he plays one Beast Bell and has well he has two in his hand at some point. Um, one other thing that I should mention is that uh, for anyone who is familiar with Trinity format, um, the I use that as the basis for deck building rules. So there can only be one copy of, of any given card, with certain exceptions. There's a ban list uh, that I custom created for these uh, for these decks that would apply to these formats. Um, so some of the changes from, uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so the main thing to keep in mind is that these are one copy of each card, prioritizes cards that were used by the character in canon uh, insofar as possible, um, are limited to cards that chronologically correlate with the art of the anime that they're in. Um, and they did have, we did have custom band lists to also help keep the power level uh, intact. Uh, then you've got Joey, uh, who uh, I don't feel like there's a lot worth talking about in his deck because it's just kind of, I mean, it is what it is. It's a lot of low level monsters. Uh, a lot of cards not worth playing, and these are all cards that he did in fact play at some point in the anime or manga, so, uh, well, in Duelist Kingdom, specifically, actually, um, with maybe a couple of small exceptions, but, uh, if, when I upload this to YouTube, if anybody has any specific questions, uh, feel free to ask, and I would be happy to respond to those questions. 
So we're just going to go ahead and jump into, we're going to skip the tutorial duel because who cares? Who cares about that? Um, actually, I don't know. Do we care about the story? Do we have to see the... Maybe we do. I don't know. So I've also been reading the manga recently. Um, when I first started this project, I prioritized the anime because that was what I was familiar with. Um, but I've been reading the manga a lot more. Uh, well, I've been actually reading through the manga recently. Um, it's actually ridiculously better. And I don't just mean like in the, oh, four kids didn't screw it up or anything. Like, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about like the way the rules were written, uh, the way the card game was balanced and like, I think I think the I think the anime is a decent adaptation, uh, given that the writers obviously did not have the love for card games like the Takahashi did. But um, one thing that I that I think is just kind of I, I don't want to say funny, but interesting about the manga in particular is that. Uh, it's actually stated that Kaiba drove a man to suicide and like maybe murdered a man to get his three blue-eyed white dragons. <laughs> oh yeah, no, Kaiba was a lot worse in the manga, especially early manga. Um, for anyone not aware, um, uh, let me see, I don't want alphabetical. Uh, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm bad at this, okay. Go one. And for this particular duel, I'm going to be using a variation of the Duelist Kingdom deck um, that I put in here. Uh, I, I put this together earlier. It has all of the cards that Yugi played in this duel specifically. Aside from that, I just pared it down to 40 cards, try to keep ones that are um, as helpful as possible. Uh, I don't expect this to go well, uh, to be honest. Actually, to be totally honest, I expect none of the duels to go well. Um, oh, no, no, no. So the thing is, in Duelist Kingdom, these decks were put together um, under the assumption that you know you weren't going to be tribute summoning. These were designed. Uh, these were designed with Duelist Kingdom rules in mind. So uh, they weren't designed around these two. So there are a lot more tribute monsters than normally would. Um, there's, um, well, and because the, the primary goal here is canon compliance, um, they, these are meant to be as accurate as possible, even to the expense, even at the expense of, like, not being good. Joey's deck in particular, I, you all saw that it has over 30 monsters. Oh, heck, that's a blue eye. Oh, yikes. <laughs> and I have, like, nothing to deal with this. Um, but, uh... Yeah, clearly. Oh, my goodness. Oh, hey! Part of the cards moment. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not going to argue with that. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, right, I, I changed my settings. I have to hold down a button if I want to react to it. I forgot about that. Oh, right. Oh, the joys of changing game settings 
and then forgetting. <laughs> Flip Summit Wall of Illusion, yes. Definitely does not work. That's a that's a really bad strategic decision. But now I have Earth of Dragon. Um, and for the record here, the goal is to win specifically with Exodia, if at all possible. His blue eyes, but I took control of him. So. Oh no! Rip Feral Imp. Yeah, there's not really any point in playing anything else at the moment. fair this is kind of how the duel went in the uh in the anime though too like it was i mean kind of yugi didn't steal the blue eyes but it very much turned into like uh yugi kind of slowly getting his butt kicked while uh kaiba just smashed his monsters um so this is going to be interesting because as soon as we hit battle phase, okay, so I'm okay, he's playing gift the mythical elf. I am going to play the magical hat. And depending on how this goes, uh, I wouldn't say this is going to decide the duel, but it's definitely going to be very impactful. So pull some cards from the deck, we shuffle them up, and uh, if this is one of those computers that cheats um, and always knows which monster, yeah, okay, maybe it does cheat. I think it does. Yikes. 
Uh, that's not ideal. This, on the other hand, though, will help. Let's rain control that. Another negated. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is fine. Um. Gosh. Another one. A freaking. Gosh darn it. I mean, I guess this is this is the reality of dueling Kaiba, but oh man. Even though this is an Exodia deck, that Exodia piece is not what I need right now. Well, this is kind of an Exodia deck. It's a really bad Exodia deck. There are a few specific cards that can help. Oh, that's one of them. Sure, yeah, that worked. Not what I had in mind, but I will take it. something? I feel like I have to be missing something because it said end of main phase. So... I don't know, maybe I just should have waited until the battle phase. Gate attack, shadow spell, battle lock. While I get. Well, no, it's just that his deck is relatively buff compared to mine. Um, also, he gets Pot of Greed. Oh, come on. Negate attack. Cool. I 
kind of saw that coming. Yeah. Reborn the monster. That, that actually wasn't what I meant to do, but okay, yeah, sure, accidental in phase. That's fine. Yeah, apparently I'm just really bad at this game. <laughs> um... I mean, that's definitely, yeah, part of it is definitely that um, I'm playing at a disadvantage given the deck that I'm using. Um, because really the point here is just to showcase the deck and uh, what they look like more than anything else. I just thought this would be a fun way to do it. Um, okay. Uh, So if that's exactly Wall of Illusion, um, that gives him his blue eyes back, and I'm kind of mad at myself for letting that happen. Yikes. I, it, it's funny because I was just thinking that before I attacked. I was like, if that is exactly Wall of Illusion, I'm giving him back his blue eyes for free. Ugh, it's disgusting. Um, Like, yes, I could probably play Karibo and uh, Spellbinding Circle, anything he summons, so I can get Battle Spear on the field. Maybe I should- Oh! Hello, Summon Skull. Let's do that instead. Karibo, don't let me down! Like, I should probably be paying attention since I set my rules the way I did. Uh, let's 
Yo, here we go. Summon Skull. The gate is <laughs> Nice. I will say, um, this is definitely, these decks are definitely, like, a lot more fun in proper Duelist Kingdom format. Uh, I'm currently working on rewriting the, like, rules and ban list and everything for, uh, Duelist Kingdom, and also a pre-Duelist Kingdom, uh, Magic and Wizards format. Uh, have all of that in a Discord server that... I would be happy to link to if anybody is interested in this. Um, oh hey, the game gave him Aquamador also. I guess I didn't have to explain that decision as much as it felt like a weird one. I just realized if he has ancient, if he plays ancient lamp again, uh, he can actually self-destruct my uh, dark magician and uh, summon skull. So I can win the duel here, but I want to get Exodia. So. Um, no. I'm not sure that's a good thing. But, I... I have plans. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty well covered, um, at the moment. Ooh, you know, I just realized, I wonder if monster recovery actually works with, uh, magical hat. That would be interesting. would be a fun tech. I'll have to try that at some point.
honestly kind of interesting how much I'm dominating this particular game. I'm in this duel, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't say that. Uh... Oh, I should have just gone ahead and set Mori Dragon. I, I wasn't really thinking about my hand card limit. Zodia piece. I assume y'all can't really read the cards on the screen at all. Yeah, so, fun fact, um, so the recommended way to stream from Nintendo Switch, which is what I'm doing, I'm not on the PC, which would probably be the best thing to do, but I'm not. Oh yeah, yeah, so, right, yeah, I forgot that this which icon and stuff is visible, but uh, now I gotta play something. Uh, let's go ahead and set all of our But um, my setup here, so generally to stream from the Switch, you'd want to use an HD capture card. Um, I, uh, I decided that was too expensive and went the opposite route of, um, of taking everything and converting it to composite so that I could use a cheap composite capture card. Um, and as a result, the Switch does not look great. Um, same with the PS3, but, you know, like, PS2 and everything looks nice. Um, streamed Duck Hunt the other day, just because I can. Um, and that came out, that came out okay. Boy, at this rate, Kaiba is gonna deck out before I, uh, before I finish Exodia. Well, I can activate Sangen's effect, and so I can at least pick up this. Just watch, the game is going to crash right before I get 
Zodiac because that's the thing that happens on the Twitch version. Uh, yeah, the, the Twitch version of the game will occasionally just like randomly crash. There are two cards that I want. That is not one of them. Uh, I... Actually, oh god. What if I just play Monster Recovery right now? That would probably not be good, actually. So, basically, yeah, yeah probably not good. Um... Also, in case anyone is wondering why I haven't played Dark Bowl yet, uh, or Swords of Revealing Light. Oh boy. Oh, okay, never mind. It's because I want to summon Meteor V Dragon. Oh my goodness, why didn't he just summon the Blue Eyes? Why didn't he just summon the Blue Eyes with Ancient Rules? Why did he do this? Why did. He Reminds me of uh, of the um, I summon man eater bug in attack position meme. Oh my gosh.
I swear, if Exodia is the last card in this deck, and I've just waited this entire duel to win by Exodia, and he just decks out, I'm gonna riot. Wow, this is so stupid. Draw your last pathetic card. Better be frickin' Exodia. Oh my goodness. Okay, my turn. Draw phase. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Apparently not familiar enough with my Dragon Ball Z lore. Okay. Now we get to actually do a real duel. Um... Yes, I, I did summon Exodia. <laughs> yeah, it was the second to last card in the deck. Yeah. One interesting thing, uh, difference in the manga versus the anime, that in the anime, wait, did they say three million dollar prize money? That's, that's, okay, yeah. That's a lot higher than it was in the manga. Um, ooh, I actually don't remember the, uh, the number right off the top of my head. Um, I want to say it was probably, it was probably something like three million yen which would be something like $30,000. Um, but I actually don't remember off the top of my head. So this is also going to be another case of the enemy's deck is buffed a lot, while mine is scaled to the power level of 2,000. Well, of, like, March 2000. So that's gonna be... This is gonna be fun. who love having bad cards. Yeah, 
like, I I will often defend uh, the the character decks as not being as bad as uh, people like to say that they are. Um, I mean, in part because they were designed around aesthetic, not actual. I mean, obviously with the game in mind, but like they were designed primarily with the aesthetic, and Suzuki Takahashi has admitted that. Because he was writing a story, right? Not designing a card game. The two, I mean, he kind of was. The, the two went hand in hand. But the story came first. Um, but, ah. Uh, so, another thing. I hate the anime and the way they handle the game. Uh, Soul Release is a pretty useless card, but they had Yugi play it in one duel that they made up because it was useful in that one duel, in that one contact. And, uh, so now it's stuck in this deck because he technically played it. So that sucks. Um... Just the way it is. Um, yeah, so for anyone undecided or, or that has that is like particularly interested in uh, you know the original Duel Monster series, uh, if you haven't, I definitely encourage you to read the manga because it's oh, it's a lot better. Um, let's go ahead, Dark Hole. Uh, this is probably a bad choice. I think I lost more than he did. And he has the field up, so this could probably be very bad. But I do have a couple cards ready to help with- Oh, Graceful Charity! Disgusting! That card was- Oh, and Pot of Greed! Absolutely disgusting. So, fun fact, Pot of Greed and Graceful Charity, in spite of being released really early on in the OCG, did not make a single appearance in the, uh, in Duelist Kingdom, in either the manga or the anime. Um... me with Cocoon of Evolution. Oh no, okay. Back to the uh, his deck got buffed a lot, while mine is this, some of this support is from like I don't know 2020. So uh, huh? Oh goodness. And also, playing with uh, TCG rules instead of Duelist Kingdom rules means that I can't summon some of these monsters. 
Thank you, game, for cards that suck. Not going well at all. Yep. Oh my gosh, I didn't lose. That's okay. Uh, well. lose next turn though. Yep, that's it. That's game. I didn't even touch him. Couldn't even summon a monster. Oh my goodness. Yes. So, real quick, uh, when it comes to these decks, Kaiba's is definitely the most well-balanced for this. Um, Yuki's is fine, but bad. And Joey's is just atrocious. Um, as much as these duels are going to look like they suck, um, any duel where we have to use Joey's deck is gonna be absolutely atrocious. Okay, so I should be able to Okay, so Watch this here. This is like one of the few things that Magical has definitely good for. Um, so there are some cards in my deck that I don't want, and some cards in my deck that I can make some use of. So here, we're going to take Horn of the Unicorn, because I can use that card. It will actually be useful to me. Um, and we're going to take Eye of Truth, because it's, it's bad. So... 
Eye of Truth will go to the graveyard, while Horn of the Unicorn's effect will put it on top of my deck. So, at the end of this turn, Horn of the Unicorn goes to the top of my deck. Uh, my turn comes, I draw it, and now I have Horn of the Unicorn and Hornet. So that I have, it's not ideal, but a 2,000 attack point monster. So that's one of like the few neat combos that you can do with Yuji's deck. Um, is it basically just lets you add Horn of the Unicorn to your hand, um, more or less, for free-ish? Which is good. Um, oh hey look, a uh, card that I can barely play. There's like one monster in the whole deck that's a target that people move. Ugh. Oh yep, yeah, there's Cocoon of Evolution. that I can actually equip this to. Well, this sucks. I can manage to get Black Illusion Ritual. I can Ritual Summon uh, uh, Magician of Black Chaos. And unless I'm unless I'm wrong about like timing and stuff, I should get Horn of the Unicorn back to my well to the top of my deck and then to my hand the next turn. So I would have Magician of Black Chaos on the field at 3500. But it is technically possible that I could be misremembering uh, the. Uh, I could be misremembering the timing thing. I know sometimes cards like that will miss the timing. Oh boy, got three Cocoon of Evolution. That's disgusting. Oh, yes! 
There we go. Meteor B Dragon. Like the trump card of this deck. Oh, so good. Also, fun fact, late game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. This card is like your only hope. Without Meteor B Dragon, you are stumped. Of course, it's not a very good game, so, uh... So there's that. But now, I've actually managed to build a pretty decent field, because, I mean, Hornamp is no pushover. Meteor B Dragon is powerful. And we've got Horn of Heaven here, in case he manages to summon anything problematic. Oh yeah, no, he's dead. <laughs> I could just dark hole myself. Ah, uh, yeah. The optimal play. because it has a lot of like really good combos but a lot of really bad individual cards oh no this one this one we could actually be stuck on for like an hour um i am not exaggerating so i've actually done this before uh this particular duel with this deck um, so, you remember I showed you Joey's deck is over 75% monster. On top of that, mine has, well, most of them are really bad. And then on top of that, my has modern harpy support in here. Um, so all together, let's see, I will be lucky if my Guardian of the Labyrinth survives this turn. And let's, so that I can summon my battle here. Um, I doubt that will happen. Um,
Yeah, so let's see what I draw this turn. Uh, ooh, yeah, no, I, mm. Well, this is bad. I was planning on streaming for maybe a total of one or two hours. I know it's been about, it's been a little over an hour now. Um, actually, I think I can check on the Twitch. Can I check on Twitch? Yes. Yes, it's been an hour, 12 minutes. Okay, yeah, this duel's not worth continuing. Oh my goodness. So, I remember when I did this before, Essentially, you have to get a really lucky opening hand with a decent monster, um, and you have to have, like, Trap Hole of Spikes in your opening hand uh, in order to, like, put a monster on the field, protect it for a turn, so that you can summon something at least halfway decent, so that you can keep some pressure on it. Um, so, like, here... Oh, no, this is actually a good opening hand. Uh, possibly. Maybe. If I can get Garuzis on the field. So, if I were going first, this would be perfect. Oh, okay, no, this might actually work. Okay. So. We're gonna set Protector of the Throne and Trap Hole of Spice. If everything goes according to plan, she might summon a monster, she might attack me, then I will, can activate Trap Hole of Spikes, and on my next turn, I'll be able to play Garuzis and uh, equip it with Salamanca. Which will give me a 2500 attack point monster. Um, issue here being... Uh, <laughs> Her cards were stronger, and I she managed she summoned two monsters, so I could not actually. Dang it! I thought that was gonna be a good opening hand, and here we are, right back to that path because I have nothing else I can do. Um, I'm trying to think what else is even in this deck that would help me at this point, and there's just not much. Oh, man. Uh... Jeez, I can boost Flame Manipulator to 1600. But that's not really helpful either, especially not long-term. Yikes. Uh... Blizzard is okay. That will help me a little bit. Or not. Okay. Uh, This duel would be tough with any of these character decks. But with Joey's in particular, it's real rough. But like, to be fair to these characters, um, well to like, Joey, Kaiba, and Yuki here. 
their decks are really these decks are really bad in TCG rules, but they weren't designed for TCG rules. Yeah, you know, within the context of their world, these decks made a lot more sense. They were a lot more playable. Um, oh man, okay, this is really bad. Well, Joey's Duelist Kingdom deck was canonically kind of bad. When in trouble, take a chance of Time Wizard, thank you. Uh, would be nice if I drew Time Wizard. Of course, Time Wizard is the... It's also kind of a bad card. <laughs> Time Wizard is like worst right deck. A lot worse. Okay, Destroyer Golem is a decent monster, I guess. Oh no! Not even close to good enough now. Axe Raider! Yo! <laughs> like, what? One of the few actually decent, normal, summonable monsters in this deck. Oh man. Uh, it, it's kind of dumb how excited I am for Axe Raider. Oh jeez. Deck's bad. You know your deck is bad when you're excited for Axe Raider. So actually, back in like 2000, in like 2000, and uh, in like, you know, 2002 in the TCG, 1700 attack was not bad. Like, 1700 attack back in that, like with that context behind it, was actually like, Entirely playable. Okay, so here's the thing. I currently have control of the situation, but I probably won't for very long. Because um, it really only takes a couple of good cards from her to turn everything around. Okay, that's fine. I didn't need Grave Robber anyway. The thing is, I should probably try to be as aggressive as possible in order to continue pressing the advantage. Uh, heck, Dragon Treasure is pretty useless. Well, that, that was bad. But we're both top decking now, except I actually have, oh, dang it. Oh, that's bad. That's real bad. And now that it's on the field, I don't really have any way to deal with it. Oh, yikes. <laughs> My cat is over here meowing at me. Um, yeah, I think I lose. That's, 
that's definitely not ideal. Well, uh, there goes literally my entire strategy. Um, at this point, like, I've been pushed. I'm, I am not interested in playing out duels that are only going to end in a crushing defeat like that. Um, This is very dependent on RNG. Because out of a 40 card deck, there are like five good cards. Meanwhile, she gets all this, like, modern support for Harpy Monsters, which... I mean, to be fair, Joey only won this duel by sheer luck with time with this, so... More or less... Oh, this is actually a decent opening hand. I wouldn't say good, but decent. Uh... I doubt that's gonna be enough to actually do anything, but here we go.
nope, nope, there's elegant egotist, and that just, that just turns everything around. Uh, the only hope I have is that she chooses to, nope, okay. Uh, do I even have any cards in my deck that can deal with that? Uh, probably not. Um, well, I mean, Time Wizard, I guess, but... Time Wizard sucks, so... That card's not helpful anymore. Would have been helpful a couple turns ago. That polymerization would be great if I had Time Wizard in my hand. Instead of these guys. Oh man. Yeah, in order for this to work, you need a very specific hand. Um, or like one of the hands in the thing. And I ain't getting it. Yep, nope, this game is over already. Pretty much, yeah. Um, because I don't really have any good way any way to recover from this. I don't have I don't have like any decent 
cards in my hand. Um, so all I can do is play Delay by setting monsters, which in Duelist Kingdom is kind of all you actually need to do because the rules work in the in the uh, anime and manga. You, you can just set paths endlessly, really. Um, but not so here. Um, so. Well, there's Time Wizard and Axe Raider and Aruzus, so uh, I maybe have some options here. That we will have. Okay. Okay, my. Yeah, you, you, you do you, I guess. Uh, you do you. Uh, quick draw. One good thing here is that she's exhausted most of her resources. Okay, this is a good sign. That means that I can actually... Yeah, let's play Tiger Ass. Uh, I have no confidence that, uh, that things are going to continue this direction. But at least this way I can get the monsters on the field. Uh, things are going to kind of depend on what I draw from here and just what, what obviously what she draws. Um, please just have no monsters. Ah, okay. Huh. Now that I have at least two decent monsters on the field though, this, that, that will help a lot. Um, now I've just kind of taken out most of her resources. See, she's only got one card in hand. Nah, I'm gonna hold on to that Grave Robber just in case things go badly. Um, and I need the Monster Reborn for something else. Because I can't deal enough damage to win this turn. One of the best 
combination to the whole deck right here. Uh, which is really sad. It's really sad. That's one of the best combinations we've got. But we won! And that's probably where we're going to call it tonight. Just because that was miserable. And uh, we've been streaming for about an hour and a half. Which is a little longer than I, meant, than I was planning to. But also, I've been having fun. Um, but next up is Mako Tsunami, an attack from the deep. We'll pick that up next time. Uh, probably going to do this every other Sunday. Um, somewhere in the evening, and, uh, yeah, thanks for joining. Um, hope to see more of you next time, and have a, oh, actually, I gotta, check it out. Yeah. <laughs> and now, long input. Wow, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> Here I am trying to just close out the video, and I'm just, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, everybody have a good night. Uh, I hope to see y'all next time. And, like, please definitely comment on the video if you have any uh, comments or questions about the character deck or uh, are interested in checking out uh, custom canon compliant Duel of Kingdom Battle City format, uh, anything of that sort. Um, I'm going to link a uh, paper that I wrote on the subject in the description on YouTube. And, uh, hope to see y'all next time.